Hi, it's Joe from Minerva. I'm here today to show you an alternative neckband um, binding that you can have here. And you don't see it on many patterns, it's not shown as an instruction, but it's just another way to add a neckband that you might find useful if you're using a woven fabric because this technique you can use on stretch or you can use on woven. If you have a few techniques in your armoury of sewing, then when you get your fabric from Minerva and you test the stretch and you find out that it's not going to go over your head or you find it's rippling a little bit or you find it's not quite what you thought it was going to be, there's always an alternative, which means you can put a neckband on. So I've already shown in a previous video putting cuffing on. So that's when you have a sweatshirt fabric and a matching cuffing. And that's a technique where you make the neckband, fold it in half, and then you sew it on right side to right side, and then flip it back and top stitch. And that's really good for sweatshirts. There's a technique where you have nothing showing from the front side. So you'd put a binding on right side to right side, but then you'd flip it completely onto the inside of your top. And that works as well for woven and for stretch. But sometimes you might just get a slight ripple on your tighter corners. So sometimes that technique works. Sometimes you might need a different one. The one I'm showing you today is where you put the bias binding um, right side to wrong side, which feels very strange, but then you flip it over and top stitch, and then you will get a binding that shows on the front. And it works on woven fabrics. It works on sweatshirts where you don't have a specific cuffing to match but you've got enough material to cut on the bias to make a neck binding it works really well on that one because the stripes are going the other way and you can get it really really quite small so you can turn over quite a small neck binding so that you don't have a really thick one that's a boat neck so i don't want a really big binding on it i just want something fine it also ha can work if you have a contrast so you could have this color fabric and then a yellow binding that goes over the top it's good if you're mixing fabrics as well this technique because then this is needle cord and then my binding is the viscose so that brings that color from the back all the way around to the front so let me show you this little technique. The stages before you put the neck binding on are you get to the bit where your shoulders are attached. I happen to have a seam down the centre back of my t-shirt because I couldn't cut two pieces on the fold so I had a little bit left but you um, put the front and the back together so that you've got your two shoulder seams and then you've got an opening to start putting your neck band on. Some other familiar parts to this process so you make your neck band this is a stretch that i'm working with today so i've got plenty of stretch going for the neck and i've quartered it which means i've put a pin in the four quarters to mark it so these two pins at the halfway points will go near the shoulder seams and the other two pins will go at the center front and center back and then i'm going to attach the neck binding to the top and this is the bit that's a little bit different this next bit is how to apply the neck binding to the neck. So you've got the right side of the neck binding, the pattern side. You're going to put that to the wrong side of the neck. Match up the edges of the fabric and pin. So you've got the right side of the neck band touching the wrong side your neck hole. So when you've got it pinned in you should be able to see the wrong side of the binding because the right side is touching the wrong side of the t-shirt so it should look like this. I'm going to sew all the way around the neck to hold the neck binding on. 
I used a zigzag stretch stitch to sew it on. So I used a um, stitch width 0 0.5 and stitch length 3, just so that it would have a nice stretch. And now I'm going to layer out that seam so that I can fold over the neckband to the front. Okay, now I'm going to bring the binding over the top of that raw edge. So I'm going to fold under a little bit, bring it over the raw edge and pin. And you will see here, I'm, slow, I'm bringing that binding over and pulling it down then we're going to top stitch I'm going to keep pinning around and then I'm just going to show you where to top stitch for the final stage okay it's under the machine it's folded from the back onto the front this the part of this process that I like is sewing the top stitching from the front so you can definitely see the finish that you're going to get around your t-shirt i'm confident enough to sew as i go with pins but if you want to tack it that's fine too you can be keeping the stretch stitch settings that you had from before and you're going to just i go really slowly because i want to make sure that i'm just getting towards the edge of the neckband All top stitched, all pressed, and there it is. I really like it as a technique on children's wear because on the inside you don't get any um, seam allowance, so not even an overlock seam allowance. So it's really, really smooth. That's why my daughter particularly likes wearing things with this on. And of course, if you haven't got an overlocker, that's a really great way of getting a stretchy neckband using your regular sewing machine. Hope you've enjoyed that technique today. Um, T-shirt's finished. It's a teenage T-shirt. It's a cactus print jersey, which you will see listed below. And I hope that you can use that technique when you have a top that you're maybe stash busting some small pieces from so that you can make sure that you get a professional finish on your neckline. The pattern I've used today is New Look. This one here, it's tagged below. I've made the t-shirt with a grown on sleeve. It's actually for wovens, but I've used some jersey today by just um, going down a pattern size. But you can use that neck binding on it or you can use the binding that's in the pattern. But I hope showing you that you've got another little technique that you can use for making a really professional finish. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye bye.